Altogic is a powerful backend app development platform designed to create applications faster. It's similar to services such as Firebase and Supabase. Altogic provides a collection of tools such as authentication, database with real-time capabilities, cloud functions, cron jobs, and much more that we're easily able to plug into the front end of applications. The benefit of using this type of service is it takes out the heavy lifting required to create these backend solutions and allows you to focus more on the front end of the application and end user experience. The great thing about Altogic is it's free to use. You're able to gain access to all the platform's features in order to learn and prototype out applications which is going to be perfect for building out small applications for your portfolio or side projects. In this video, I'll show you how to get up and running with Altogic, integrate it into Vue, and then create a simple book directory CRUD application. Now, if you do enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like on it as this really helps out the channel. Also, if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that for more content like this. All right, let's jump into the video. First, you'll want to create a new account with Altogic. You can sign up with Google or opt to create an account with a username, email, and password. Once signed in, you'll want to create a new application by selecting New App. You'll want to name your application accordingly, but for the sake of this video, I'll just be naming this one Books Directory. Next, we'll need to select the domain. You can leave it as a pre-generated one given to you by Altogic or opt to add your own. For the deployment location, it'll automatically choose the best location for you, but you're also able to select from a variety of options. Since we're just going to be testing Altogic today, the free tier will work perfect. The free tier gives you access to all the platform's features, allowing you to learn the platform and fully prototype out applications. Lastly, they provide you with some different templates to start off with. To keep things simple, I'll just be choosing blank and then select Create App. Once created, we'll see the application listed here on the page. Let's click on the application we just created to go into the dashboard. Altogic works off models for its database. Models consist of various fields such as text, boolean, integers, and more. For the small application we're going to be creating, we'll need a new model to define our books. Within the app overview of the dashboard, we'll want to click on the Models tab. In the top right hand corner, we'll want to click New and select Model. You also have the option to create a model from JSON. For the model name, we'll call this book and leave the group option blank. Then we'll leave the selection option of create this modal permanent, meaning it'll be stored inside of our database. And lastly, we're going to enable timestamps and click on next. The final step to creating this model is selecting the default endpoints. Altogic automatically creates five what are called endpoint services. Endpoint services are for more advanced CRUD operations, and we'll dive a little bit deeper into these later on within this video. For generic CRUD operations, we wouldn't need to select these endpoint services. Altogic automatically includes these, and they can be accessed through what is called the client library, which looks very similar to what you might see inside of Firebase or Supabase. Now, for the sake of learning about services within Altogic, we're going to be selecting these endpoint services. However, we're actually not going to be using these as we'll opt to be using the Altaja client library. For this book model, we need to add a few fields for the book title and author. To do this, we want to select on the model and click the new field button in the top right hand corner. This provides a list of different fields we can create. For the two fields we're going to be creating, we'll just select the text field option, which provides an additional list of options, and then we'll choose text. The first field name will be title, and we'll want to make this required. Then we need to do this once more for the author field. And now we have successfully created and set up our first model for our database. Next, let's take a look at services. On the service tab of the dashboard, Altogic auto-generated these five endpoint services when we created the book model. The biggest difference between endpoint services and the internal endpoints available through the client library is the ability to make the endpoints more advanced. On each service you can find a field named contents which informs you of the nodes and connectors each service contains. So you might be wondering what are these nodes and connectors. Let's take a closer look. I'll select the create book object endpoint service. This will take you to a new page with an interactive drag and drop feature. Within this page, there are four boxes within this endpoint which are called nodes. The lines connecting them to one another are called connectors. 
Currently by default, this endpoint service is doing the same exact thing as using the create object method within the client library. So you might be thinking, what's the purpose then? Well, you can actually make these requests more advanced and custom using the library of nodes Altogic provides. An example may be that after we create a new book, we may want to send a user an email. Or perhaps we can even utilize Altogic's marketplace of third-party vendors such as Stripe for managing subscription integrations. You'll want to keep in mind if you do alter these endpoints by adding additional nodes, these do not get updated for the Altogic client library. You'll have to use the RESTful endpoints using something like Axios or Altogic's endpoint manager. Now that we have an understanding of how services work, let's begin to populate our database with book entries. To do this through the platform, we can use what is called the Altogic Navigator. To get to the Navigator, you'll want to head to the top of the page and select the cloud icon. This will open up a small pop-up with the information about the current environment. By default, when we create an application, a development environment is created for us. If you are working with a real application, you can create different environments for your application as well. Inside this pop-up, you'll want to select Navigator. This will be the visual display of our database. Currently, we don't have any entries within our database, so let's create one. We can do this by selecting the New button. Then we'll want to fill in the two fields for the title and author, and then click the check mark to create it. And now we have a new entry within our database. Alright, now that we have the backend set up and we're familiar with Altogic, let's begin integrating the database to a view application. Within VS Code, I have a new view project set up. First, we're going to install the Altogic client library with the command npmi Altogic. Next, we'll create a new env file to store the Altogic credentials using the command touch.env. Inside this file, we're going to create two new variables, vite Altogic env url and vite Altogic client key. For the values of these variables, we're going to need to reference the Altogic dashboard. For the env URL, we'll select the first value within the API base URL box. Then we'll need to navigate into the settings and select the Client Library Keys tab. Let's select this key. We're going to uncheck and disable the box for enforcing session since we won't be using authentication for this video. Let's copy the key and set it equal to the client key env variable. Inside of the view project, we're going to need to create a new folder for Altogic. Within this folder, we're also going to create a file called altogic.js. This will act as a configuration and entry point for Altogic. Let's start by importing the create client method. Then we need to create two variables, one for the env URL, which will be set to our environment variable of the Altogic env URL, and the second is for the client key, which will also be set to one of our environment variables, which was the v Altogic client key. Next, we need to create another variable called Altogic and set it equal to the method createClient. This method accepts two parameters. The first is going to be our variable for our env URL, and the second is going to be for the client key. Lastly, we just need to export the Altogic variable, and now Altogic has been integrated within our view project. To save some time for this introduction, I've already went ahead and created the UI for this CRUD app using Tailwind CSS, and inside of the browser it initially looks like this. If you're looking to follow along, you can find the completed repo on GitHub. That link will be down below in the description. Let's start by obtaining and listing the books within our application. As mentioned earlier, we're going to be using the client library. To use this, we'll want to start by importing Altogic from the file we created earlier. Next, we need to create a new ref called book data to store the book entries in. We'll also have to import ref from view. To obtain the books from Altogic, we're going to create a new asynchronous function called get books. Inside this function, let's create a new variable. We'll destructure the response to obtain the data and also an error if present. We'll set this variable equal to Altogic, which was the name we gave it within the import. And we're going to target the property called DB. Now within this property, we have access to a method called model, which accepts a param for the model name, which for this application was set to book. Lastly, we want to call the method get. As long as no error is present on the call, we'll set the value of our book data ref to the return data. Also, we're going to iterate through the data and add a property called isEditing 
to detect if the book is being edited, which we'll use later within the video. Now that we have our data, inside of the template, let's add a V4 loop on this div to output one for each book that we have. Then using the param, which was called book on the V4 loop, we can output the title and author within the correct paragraph tags. Let's also add some conditional rendering to a few of the buttons. On the create button, we'll set a vif directive to only show this button if book.isLocal is set to true. If this condition is not true, then we'll set a vElseIf directive to only display this update button if book.isEditing is true. Otherwise, we'll use a vElse directive to display the edit button. Lastly, inside the script, we want to call this function. Since we made this asynchronous, we want to add the keyword await in front of the function. One thing to mention is that since this view is now asynchronous, we have to wrap the router view tag within a suspense tag. If you do want to learn more about this, I did create a separate video on suspense that you can find down below in the description. Now back inside of the application, we should be seeing all the books that we have within our database. With all the books being listed, let's add the ability to create a new book. For this, we're going to need two functions, one to create a local version of a book object and another to make a call to Altogic to create it. The first function is going to be called create local book. Within here, we're going to push a new book object to the array of books we currently have. Within this object, we need to create some properties. The ID, which we can create a local one using built-in math methods, then we'll have the title, author, is editing, and lastly is local. Within the template, we want to call this function each time we click on the create new book button. The next function is going to be for creating the book within Altogic, which will be asynchronous. We'll call this create database book and have it accept two parameters, book and index. Inside the function, let's start off by creating a new variable and a structure in the response to obtain the data and error if present. We're going to set this variable equal to altogic.db and use the model method with the param of book. Then we want to add the object method followed by the create method, which accepts an object. Within this object, we'll add the title and author properties. We can obtain the values for these two properties by using the book param defined on this function. Lastly, if no error is present, we can target the book within the current array using the index param and add the return data, and also reset the is editing property to null. Within the template, we need to make a few updates. I'll add this div that contains two inputs, which will be for updating and creating new books. We're only going to show this if the book is currently being edited. Otherwise, using a vElse directive, we'll display the value of the title and author. Lastly, let's add a click handler on the create button and pass in the param of book and then the index. Within the application, let's create a new book. Let's click on the Create button and then enter in a title and author. Then we need to click the Create button within the box. And now we should have the ability to add new books within the application. With the ability to create a new book, let's add the functionality to update it. For this again, we're going to create two functions, one to toggle the editing mode and another to update the book itself. To toggle the book, we'll create a new function called toggle book editing and have it accept a param for the index. Within this, we just want to target the book within the array using the index param and set the property of as editing to true. Within the template, we want to call this function each time the edit button is clicked. The next function, which will be for updating the book within the database will be asynchronous. We'll call this function update book and have it accept two parameters, book and index. Inside the function, let's create a new variable and to structure the response to obtain the data and an error if present. We're going to set this variable equal to altogic.db and use the model method with the param of book. Then we want to add the object method, which will pass a param of the ID to target the specific book which we are going to be updating, followed by the update method, which accepts an object. Within here, we'll just pass the two properties being updated, title and author. If no errors are present, we'll target the book within the array and set it equal to the return data from Altogic and then set the is editing property back to null. Within the template, we want to call this function each time we click on the update button and also pass in the params of book and index. Now, if we head to the application and click on edit and alter the values and click update, we can now modify our books. The final part to this book directory is the ability to delete books. To do this, we're going to create a new function called delete book, which will be asynchronous and will accept a param of book. First, we need to check if the book being deleted is local. 
If it is, we don't want to make a call to Altogic since the book would not yet exist. If this if statement is true, then we want to delete the book from the database. To do this, let's say await altogic.db and use the model method and pass in the param of book, followed by the object method, which will pass a param for the book ID we're attempting to delete. And lastly, the delete method. We're also going to want to remove the book locally from the array. We can do this by using the filter method and filter out the book by checking to see which ID matches the current book in the array and then removing it. And inside of the template we want to add a click handler to run this function each time we click on the delete button. Then inside the application we will now have the ability to remove books. Alright, that's going to wrap it up for this introduction to Altogic and Vue. Keep in mind that this CRUD application is very basic for the sake of this introduction. If you do want to go beyond this introduction, try adding some air handling to improve this application. Also, let me know what your thoughts are about Altogic and if you want to see more content using this service. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.